thank you so much for your comment. And for the most part, the people who commented were kind and empathetic or understanding. But what I want to discuss is this comment. We're going to read it together. Okay? Okay. So we're going to break down Butterfly Nick 29's comments together. Okay? So the first one is, all teachers do is complain nowadays. It's nowadays. <laughs> and no, we don't. We express our frustration in the hopes that there will be change. So we're not complaining. We're voicing our frustration, our concerns, our fears. Okay? All right, that's one. I know them kids are a different breed. That we can agree on. That we can agree on. Because teaching in high school, even though I hear from middle school teachers, elementary school teachers, and preschool teachers, that today's children are a different breed. So that we are in agreement. Okay? Um, now this is where we get sticky. All right, Butterfly Nick? Um... But damn, this said, starting the sentence with but, um, and it should be, this is sad, <laughs> okay? Right, um, kids going to class knowing their teachers hate their job. At no point did I ever say that I hate my job. And it's very rare that you will find a teacher that says they hate their job. What we do hate is being undervalued, underappreciated, under desks when there's an active shooter. Those are the things that we hate, right? But teaching? No, we don't. Um, and then you say, guarantee if teachers made six figures, they would show up in the parking lot early. So just for shits and giggles, I do actually get to work early, as do most teachers. Do you want to know why? Because we don't have enough time in the school day to get our work done. So most teachers show up to work early and leave late and then still take homework home to our houses and grade papers or call parents or create schedules and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So... There's that. But I digress. Let's continue this discussion a little bit. I'm not done with you yet, Butterfly Nick. Okay, hold on. I just want to clear all this off my screen. Hold on. So, Butterfly. Um, and I'm mad that's your name because you know I love butterflies. But anyway, I have five, just five questions to ask you. The first question I have to ask you um, when you're at work, does Brad ever come to work with a firearm threatening to inflict bodily harm on you and your coworkers? Okay. Question number two. Um, does Susie down in accounting ever come to work with a kitchen knife um, threatening to unalive herself? Okay. Uh, question number Three, um, do you personally, you, get emails threatening to blow up your job if you go to work on a Tuesday? Hmm? Mm. Um, question number four, at your job, do you have drills on what to do if there's an active shooter in your office building? Do y'all do, do that at your job? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my final question, question number five, is do you spend, say, mm, four? Actually, I'm going to drop it down to two. Do you spend two hours out of your eight-hour work day listening to the traumas of all of your coworkers? No, because that's what you have HR for. Okay, so if you answered no to all of those questions, then you have no idea what it is like being a teacher in 2024. We 
love our jobs. We absolutely love making a difference in a child's life, right? I'm an English teacher at heart. I love when I get a kid to fall in love with the English language or a book or, or a passage or a poem. I love that. I love when I get a kid who was not going to class all of a sudden turn around and say, you know what, miss? I, I got a 75 in class because I've been going every day this week. Like, I love those moments, right? I love when we have, we have heroes, right? When in, in, in our everyday, I love when we get a hero. When all of a sudden a kid will bring a wallet back into the office and it is full of money, ID, and credit cards. I love being an educator. Don't get it twisted. But in today's society, there is way more weight to being an educator than non-educators could ever possibly imagine. And all the things that we as educators deal with, the regular person doesn't have to deal with it. Why? Because like I said, you have human resources for that. You have an HR for that. We're it. We are the parents for some of these kids. We are their therapists, their lawyers, their, their social workers, their shoulder to cry on. The regular person, except maybe maybe doctors, a lot of doctors got to deal with that, right? Doctors and nurses, y'all have no idea what it is like dealing with teenagers, raging hormones. Do you remember what you were like, butterfly? Do you remember what you were like when you were uh, a teenager in high school? Were you easy? I'm curious. So how about putting on our listening ears when teachers talk about the struggles that we're dealing with? And I did say it is only week three. And there's a lot of things that I can't say that we've had to deal with. But we have dealt with a lot in three weeks. Unprecedented amount of trauma with our children. And that is not complaining. That is educating the people who don't know, the people who don't see, the politicians out there that think that it is an easy thing being an educator in 2024. That is why teachers like myself and many other teachers out there that have their podcasts and web pages and, and they s send out posts because people don't know what we're dealing with. And if you're a parent, you also know that your kids are one way with you and a totally different thing when they're in the school building. Right? So let's be a little bit more empathetic understanding when it comes to our teachers and um, next time you want to come for teachers <laughs> proofread thanks you have the day that you deserve